Oh man, who's that calling now? Right in the middle of a good game of Space Invaders. Hey there man, how you doing Stefano? All good? Oh man, I almost didn't answer this call. I was busy playing a game on this servercade cabinet and I thought, oh, who's that disturbing me? I've just started playing a game and I wasn't going to answer. But I saw it as you and I thought, hey, I've got to answer it, Stefano. Can you believe it, man? It's been a year since you were over here visiting. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, man, it was awesome times. Anyway, what I wanted to ask you is... I think we need to do a video where we do some ZFS data set replication across the Atlantic Ocean to you over there in the States. So what I'm hoping is you can set up some sort of VPN and we can connect our servers together and do some data replication from server to server. I want to send an encrypted data set to you and see how easy it is to restore it. Yeah, cool man. Thanks very much. Anyway, I've got to go. I'm going to go back to my game and see if I can beat my Space Invader high score. Cheers, man. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah. Bye. Bye-bye-bye. All right, well, I guess we got some work to do then. Let's get started. I think the best way to go about this would probably be using this device as our VPN. This is from GLINet, and this is their Broom 2. For anyone who hasn't heard of the Broom 2, this is their security gateway, and it's capable of doing a lot of things, but the only thing that we'll be interested in it today is setting it up as a VPN, so that way, Ed from across the pond can reach all the way over to my Unraid server and connect to it as if they're on the same network. That's gonna be our goal. We're not gonna do any ad blocking or anything too serious like that. And so the Broom 2 is a pretty sleek device that has a nice finish that is very similar in color to a MacBook Pro. There is a factory reset button on the side of the device and on the front is a one gigabit ethernet LAN port, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet WAN port, a USB 3.0 and USB type C port that can be used for powering the device. The 2.5 gigabit Ethernet WAN port and 1 gigabit Ethernet LAN port is a very strange combination to me. Furthermore, I wish it was a PoE capable device instead of requiring USB power. For anyone who may be curious, the length of the power cable is right around 39 inches. Now normally I would use all of this equipment here, but just to make it things as easy and simple as possible, I'm actually going to be using this Alta Labs 8 port switch that will be connecting uh, to the Broom 2. Now, it would be really cool if the Broom 2 was PoE because I could just power one device instead of having to power both. And also, if this cable was longer, I wouldn't need an extension cable. So, we gotta get that set up. And while we're at setting up the extension cable, I'm just gonna go ahead and, or I already have plugged in my kilowatt so we can determine how much power this thing uses when it's under load. We'll get that plugged in there. And... Now I just need to get the Alta Labs switch plugged in as well. Easy. Yeah, this is gonna look messy, but it's only temporary, so not too big of a deal. Now I have two internet service providers, so it's gonna make it really easy. I have AT&T and Google Fiber, but you guys don't need to worry about that. All you really need to know is, is focus on this part down here. So this cable here goes to my Google Fiber internet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this into the WAN port on the Broom 2. And this goes to my gaming computer that is in my office. And we're just gonna plug that into one of these ports here. And then we need to connect the Broom 2 to my switch. So we'll just connect it with this cable. Anywhere is fine. And this is where I wish the Broom 2 was PoE. So that way we wouldn't need this additional short power cable. We could just plug it directly into a PE PoE capable switch. All right, with all of that set up, we should be good to go. And just for fun, I'm also gonna plug this black cable in as well, and this goes to my server. So now everything is connected and we should be able to reach this locally and go ahead and configure it. With everything plugged in, I just wanna make sure it's all working. So we're gonna open up PowerShell here and then type in ipconfig to make sure that I am pulling an IP address. And it looks like I am. I'm pulling an IP address of 192.168.8.201, and that is on the default subnet of 192.168.8.1. So that's good. Now, open your browser of choice, and we're gonna type in 192.168.8.1. 
which is the default address for the broom too. So we're gonna click on English because that's the language I speak. We're gonna enter in a super secret password that is easy to remember and totally not simple at all in any way. All right, click on apply. And now we are ready to create our VPN. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to VPN, click on VPN dashboard. And this is where we're gonna set up wire guard. So we'll click on set up now, we'll generate a configuration. You can set this to whatever you'd like. For fun, I am just gonna change this to 172.0.0.1 and then we'll leave the default port. We'll click on apply. That's gonna create that server. And now we're gonna to need to add a profile. So we'll click on add and then we'll give the profile a name. We're gonna call this Space Invader since this is his client name. We'll click apply. And we're just going to go ahead and click on download. And this will download a configuration file that we'll need for later. And I did blur out the middle here because that is a QR code you can scan with your phone or other smart device to get attached to the WireGuard client. But for now, we're just gonna close that. Now, if you wanted to have multiple clients, let's say, you know, one for your mom, you could do that here. If you wanted to have one for your sister or daughter or whomever, you can create multiple clients and share out that configuration file to more than one person. So that way they don't have to use the same client IP address or the same client configuration file. From here, we're gonna to wanna to go back over to our VPN dashboard. And before we enable this, we'll just go over to options and we will say allow remote access to LAN. So this is very important if you want your remote systems to be able to reach your LAN network and all of the stuff on it. We'll go ahead and click apply. And then now we will enable this. Now we're just gonna to want to get, get that configuration file and put that on my laptop. So I'm just gonna copy it to an external thumb drive. You can get this over there however you'd like um, via encrypted email, via encrypted text message. However it is, you definitely wanna keep this safe because there are keys in here that you don't wanna share publicly. So let's get this copied over to our laptop that is on the AT&T network and get connected to our VPN. So my laptop's already connected to my AT&T's Wi-Fi, so we don't really need to do anything from there. We just need to copy over, well, let me get this out of the way. We just need to copy over that configuration file to our WireGuard, and then we should be able to connect and also test our connection to the server. So let me work on that and we will be good to go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up WireGuard here. I'm gonna click on that and go to Manage Tunnels, click on Import VMs, and we can see that our external SSD is already listed, so I'll highlight that video, because that, or that configuration file, because that's what I want. And it already pulls in the configuration file on my behalf. I'm gonna click on Activate here. And now supposedly this is activated and we should be able to reach our server. So let's go ahead and test that by opening up a browser. Again, I will be using Firefox. And then we can type in the address of the gateway, which is .8.1, and we can access the gateway. So that means our connection is live. So let's go ahead and log into our gateway remotely. All right, and then let's go over to clients. And one of these should be our server. So it looks like this was the gaming PC that we saw earlier because we checked that first. And I'm pretty sure this is the switch. So let's just go ahead and assume that this is the server. So let's copy and paste that IP address, enter that in, and that is my server. So now we have full remote access to my server over the network. And apparently I can't remember the password, so maybe we don't have access to it. All right, there we go. Now I'm actually logged into the server and yeah, we're, we're all connected. The Broom 2 has a bandwidth limit of around 355 megabits per second using WireGuard. And my home internet connection is only 300 megabits per second. So we were able to at least max out my home internet connection with no issue and get near that 355 megabit per second through the VPN. So that's really good. And I'm pretty impressed with just how easy it is to set up the WireGuard VPN connection and how easy it is to just get everything going. Now for me, it's a lot easier because I have two ISPs. So of course, just transferring from one computer on one network over to another computer on, the on a different network is obviously really simple. 
And if you're at home, you probably have to email it or put it on a flash drive and give it to a friend or send it through Signal or something like that. So it can be a little bit more difficult in that regard, but overall, I still think the entire process itself is incredibly simple. The Broom 2 has been running for just over 44 hours and has only cost one cent so far at a rate of 11 cents per kilowatt hour. It's used barely 0.1 kilowatts per hour and would cost me just under $2 a year to run 24 seven. Well, that certainly ended up being a lot easier to set up and get working than I thought it would be. So big kudos there. And if you guys want to know what's going to end up happening in the future between Ed and I, you're definitely going to want to stick around and keep an eye out for whenever that video comes out. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace.